नई वीडियोस के नोटिफिकेशन के लिए बेल आइकॉन को प्रेस करें और चैनल सब्सक्राइब करें असलम concept of centripetal force so without further ado let's get started so today we're going to be discussing the law of gravitation the relationship of the law of gravitation with newton's third law of motion gravitational field the mass of the earth and finally motion of artificial satellites the law of gravitation The law of gravitation states that every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance between their centers. To elaborate, I'll show a figure. Consider the following two bodies with masses m1 and m2 respectively. Both m1 and m2 are applying a force on each other that are equal in magnitude. but opposite in direction the force f is directly proportional to the product of their masses which mean f is directly proportional to m1 into m2 and f is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two centers of the object so f is inversely proportional to d square this leads us to the formula f is equal to g into m1 m2 upon d square So from the previous figure we conclude that the two bodies of masses m1 and m2 attract each other with equal but opposite force f as i had said earlier f is directly proportional to the product of the masses of the two bodies so in equational form we would write f is directly proportional to m1 into m2 f is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two bodies so f is inversely proportional to 1 upon d square this leads us to the formula f is equal to g m1 into m2 upon d square here g is a proportionality constant that balances the equation g is also known as a universal constant and the value of g is 6.673 to 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kilogram square Since g has a very small value it is negligible and therefore we do not feel the gravitational attraction between the objects around us Since the mass of the earth is very large it attracts the nearby objects with a significant force Weight of an object on the earth is a result of this significant force Next we move on to relationship between Newton's third law of motion and the law of gravitation So we know that two masses m1 and m2 attract each other with a force that are equal in magnitude but they have an opposite force that they apply on each other. So if the force on m1 is considered as the action then force acting on m2 will be considered the reaction. This is in perfect harmony with Newton's third law of motion that states to every action there is always an equal but opposite reaction. gravitational field according to newton's law of gravitation the gravitational force between a body of mass m and the earth is given by f is equal to g m into capital m e upon r square so this is exactly like the equation f is equal to g into m1 m2 upon d square except m1 and m2 except this equation 5.2 talks about the force that involves the mass of the earth so capital m with the subscript e represents the mass of the earth and m represents the mass of some general body and r square represents the radius of the earth the gravitational force is a non contact force which means it doesn't have to be necessarily in contact in order to attract or repel whatever and the gravitational field is present all around the earth it's assumed that it's all around the earth and it is directed towards the center of the earth the gravitational force per unit mass is called the gravitational field strength of the earth it is given by g 
at the Earth's surface, the value of G is 10 Newton per kilogram. Now let's move on to the mass of the Earth. Consider a body of mass M on the surface of the Earth as shown in the figure. So this is the body of mass M and this blue sphere shows the Earth. Let the mass of the Earth be Me and radius of the Earth be R. The distance of the body from the center of the Earth will also be equal to the radius R of the Earth. According to the law of gravitation, the gravitational force F of the Earth acting on a body is given by F is equal to G into M into Me upon R square as in the previous slide. Now since the force with which the Earth attracts a body towards its center is equal to its weight, F is equal to W is equal to Mg. Now F is equal to Mg so we can replace the value of F with Mg. So, which gives us equation 5.5. Mg is equal to G into M into Me upon R square. The small m's are cancelled. That gives us G is equal to G into Me upon R square. Which finally gives us Me is equal to R square into small g upon capital G. And mass Me of the earth can be determined on putting the values in the equation 5.7. Variation of G with altitude Consider a body of mass M at an altitude H as shown in the figure. The distance of the body from the center of the earth becomes R plus H. Now, the value of G is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the center of the earth. But it doesn't remain constant, it decreases with altitude. Altitude is the height of an object or place above sea level. The value of G is greater at sea level than at the hills. Which takes us to our Equation 5.6 in the previous slide shows that the gravitational acceleration G depends on the radius of the Earth. G is inversely proportional to the square of R. The value of G varies with change in altitude as I've said earlier. At altitude h, the value of g becomes gh is equal to g into me upon r plus h square. Now the reason it's r plus h square and not only r square is because h, the altitude h, also adds up to the distance between the object and the center of the earth. Equation 5.8 also states that an altitude equal to one earth's radius g becomes one fourth of its value on the earth's surface. So, if G is like directly on top of the earth, so the value would be one-fourth of its original value. And if there are two radiuses, then the value would be one-ninth of what it was originally on earth. Now we move on to the final topic, motion of artificial satellites. Consider a satellite of mass M revolving around the Earth at an altitude h in an orbit of radius r0 with an orbital velocity v0. The necessary centripetal force required is given by the equation f0 is equal to mv0 square upon r0. Now, a like what is a satellite? A satellite requires centripetal force that keeps it to move around the Earth. The gravitational force of attraction between a satellite and the Earth provides the necessary centripetal force. Okay. Now, the force is provided by a gravitational force of attraction between the Earth and the satellite and is equal to the weight of the satellite W prime mgh. Thus, F0 is equal to W prime is equal to mgh. Therefore, mv0 square upon r0 is equal to equation 5.9. Then we further go into v0 which is the orbital velocity. It would be equal to gh bracket r plus h bracket closed 1 by 2 whole square. Then we get v0 is equal to g into r 1 by 2 whole square. And that concludes today's topic. I hope you understood it. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. अपनी सलाहियतों को दुनिया के सामने उजागर करें अतफाल नामा की मोबाइल ऐप डाउनलोड करें 
और अपनी वीडियो बनाकर हमें भेज दें हम आपकी वीडियो को दुनिया के सामने लेकर आएंगे